<laughs> All the way from Arizona, please welcome Marisa Sigmund. Just to be kicked out 
for who she associates with and for, for freedom of speech. It's okay, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, the whole disconnection policy, Scientology lies about that constantly. Since my mother was declared a suppressive person, uh, my sister was ordered to disconnect from all of us. And she did so for about three years. She didn't have anything to do with us at all. So disconnection is real. It does happen. I don't care how much Scientology lies about this. I'm here as a witness to it. Uh, my father is a queer, which means he has attained the middle of the bridge. And he's actually a past life queer, which means he's done this before. So I always joke about past life queers and ask, if you've done this before, do you get a refund? You know, do you think you get your money back? And of course the answer is no, you don't get your money back. Uh, when you're a queer, they tell you that you're invincible, your body is irrelevant, you do not have to worry about psychosomatic illnesses such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease. You're, you're never going to get that because you're so spiritually above everybody else mm. that your body doesn't matter. It's just a piece of meat. It's a piece of crap. So my father went through life believing this, that he's invincible. And now that he's 60, um, you know, he's realizing that it's not true. He uh, has some health issues going on. And he's having a hard time. He doesn't know how to take care of himself. And I know that that sounds strange. It sounds weird. But I think it's something that not too many people understand, I guess, unless if you've experienced it. Uh, so that always gets me a little bit emotional. It's very depressing having to watch my parents figure out their lives again in their 60s after spending 30 years being brainwashed and duped by a cult. It's very hard. A big story of mine that many people may know about is the death of my nephew. Uh, his name was Tyler Reeves. He died at nine years old, and I ultimately hold the Church of Scientology's rules and policies liable for his death. Uh, since my sister was the executive director of the Phoenix Org, she was ordered to stay on post 15 to 16 hours a day, six to seven days a week. And she had three young children. And when you run into problems, like not being able to find a babysitter or your car, you're having car problems, you're insulted for having problems like that. Those are wild issues. So. She was trying to save the planet and giving her life up for this. And her children were left home alone one night, and the house burnt down and caught on fire. Oh, oh no. So my oldest nephew and niece managed to make it out, and my nephew Tyler uh, passed away in the house fire. And the local news media was trying to make a story about it. They wanted to know why were no parents home who the parents were, you know, it's usually a big story. Drownings and burnings are big stories in Phoenix. And I remember coming home to a news van uh, wanting to speak to me. They wanted to know who my sister was and I told the reporter that, I told the reporter that uh, I just found out my nephew died. I don't want to speak to them at this time. I'd like a chance to mourn in privacy. Uh, somebody contacted OSA and told them that the news media is trying to make a big story out of this since my sister is the, the ED of the org. Scientology did not want this getting out publicly. And OSA flew out quicker than shit, excuse my language, but they flew out like that. I mean, they were on the next plane and the OSA agent, I don't know any names, they, they don't usually give out names, but they contacted me and said, we understand that you have spoken to the news media. What did you tell them? And I said, I, I didn't really talk to them. I told them I wanted to be left alone. So this OSA agent told me that I cannot speak to the news media. I cannot mention that my sister is a Scientologist and that she's running the Phoenix Org. If I do so, I could put the whole Church of Scientology in jeopardy and also the whole future of mankind. <laughs> if they I mean, if they found out about this. Uh, I was in my early 20s back then, so 
having the idea that I could be responsible for Earth's demise. Was, I didn't want to be a part of that, so I said, <laughs> I'm not going to talk to the news media, don't worry. Um, but at the, the funeral service for my nephew, which from what I'm gathering from other people who had deaths, Scientology funerals, it's probably one of the strangest, creepiest experiences that you will ever have. I wrote a poem to say publicly at my nephew's funeral, just in honor of him, how much I love him, just, you know, final goodbye. And an OSA person came up to me and said, hey, we hear that you have a poem that you would like to read out loud. We need to read this first before you can say this. And I asked why, and they said, well, we just want to make sure that you're not saying anything bad about L. Ron Hubbard, David Miscavige, or the Church of Scientology. And I said, well, that, that's the last thing I want to talk about. It's my nephew's funeral. I'm, I'm not going to talk about David Miscavige here. So they read it, and they gave me the thumbs up that I could read it publicly. And during the whole service, uh, there were about three OSA agents. They were just walking back and forth. I mean, it's literally like the CIA, how you see them walking, you know, on top of the White House and, uh, you know, wearing their men in black uniforms. Really, really weird. And my nephew was cremated, but my side of the family, since the, we were considered downstat Scientologists, since my parents were not going up the bridge and spending money, we were not allowed to know where my nephew's ashes were spread, and we were completely left out of the whole process. Like, it, it was a huge secret. And I've heard that from other people, that it's the same thing, where they just cover it up. They don't want you to know what they're doing with the body, what's happening. And uh, so, yeah, that is, that is what happened to my nephew. And it's, it's very disturbing. And that's around the time when it fully dawned on me, just how evil and corrupt the Church of Scientology is. So, uh, uh, as for me, I spent the majority of my Scientology experiences as a child and a teen since I grew up in it. Uh, I had a full-fledged Scientology upbringing. I don't have the experience of OT levels or even clear, but I've taken many courses, I've read many Scientology books, I've had tons of auditing performed on me, I've done the purification rundown twice, joined staff. Um, you know, I was basically a dollar symbol within the Church of Scientology. If the Phoenix Org needed more, more money, my parents were called to get me on course. Uh, it wasn't that anyone on staff at the org wanted to help me. I don't think they really cared if I gained anything from these courses. They just needed to get their stats up and their money level for the week. Yeah. And what better way to do it than by a younger kid whose parents make decent money. Um, but the thing is, Scientology makes it blatantly obvious that they don't care about other people's well-being. The whole time I grew up in Scientology, there's such an emphasis on helping others and saving the planet. You know, this whole global thinking, and honestly, I can't think of one time where I was ever told to help someone. I've never seen anybody else help each other. It's, it's very weird. You go to these events, you know, I would watch them via satellite where David Miscavige is talking how the whole Mideast, Af Af Afghanistan, and Uganda is reading Dianetics, and <laughs> I'm just sitting there even as a younger person thinking, I, I, I don't think this is really happening. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's, it's odd how they try to trick you and make you believe that they're doing this, uh, saving the earth, saving the planet. It, it's not reality, it's not what is actually going on. Um, you know, whenever I would yawn, sneeze, be angry, or upset over something, I was constantly asked, what have I done lately that I do not want anyone to know about? Because they believe if you're angry or getting sick, you must have done something to create this. You're guilty of something. As a lot of you may know, it's called Overton Withholds. So I had to write up my Overton Withholds 
many times, probably from the time I was about seven years old. And uh, they have your life sec sectioned off into eight dynamics. So I remember one time having to write up every overt and withhold I've done in my whole entire life. It took me about three days to write everything up. And um, I'm sure you've all heard about the masturbation thing in Scientology. That's considered a first dynamic withhold because it's something you're doing to yourself that you do not want anybody to know about. And uh, I remember writing all of this up, and then my auditor was told that, or told me, that she's going to show this to my parents now. And I remember begging and pleading with her that I don't care what she shows my parents, she can show them all of my other dynamics. I don't want my parents reading my first dynamic over and with holes because it's pretty freaking embarrassing for one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just something I want to keep to myself. It's, it's personal. So my parents had to read everything wrong I've done in my whole life. And then I was told afterwards that the auditor did this incorrectly, and this shouldn't have happened, uh, period. And I was told this constantly throughout my life, that I had the wrong tech applied. My auditor didn't know what he or she was doing. I had the wrong drills performed on me. So right now, yeah, I just, you know, it, it's nice to know that I was basically used as a big mental experiment on a bunch of people who have no clue what they're doing. But that's, that's Scientology. It's a world where everybody wants to act like they are superior and have immense mental powers. But it's really a world full of lost and confused souls who are brainwashed. Yeah, I could go on and on with stories of what it's like to grow up in this cult. It could spend several hours, but I know we're on a time limit, so uh, it's just, you know, it's me bringing any ounce of awareness to this can shed some insight for any of you, or if anybody is watching this that can gain something from this. Uh, I, I know I've done my job at least. It's getting a lot more public awareness thanks to people like Pete and this, this event. Uh, it needs to be stopped. I, I don't understand how it is allowed to continue by our government. It's a very destructive cult. And I hope that we're all here to see its demise. Thing. I, I forgot to mention that, but 
My sister was crying profusely because it was her son that died, and she had to get tons of auditing afterwards and intensives to just run it out, as they say. You have to run out all of your emotions so that you no longer have charge over the situation, mental charge. You, you just have to flatten it out to where you don't care. And for me, I you know, was crying, and I would hear people in the background, you know, uh, Scientologists that have been around for a while, and they would tell us, you know, you know, stop being banky. You're being griefy, you're being banky. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, your bank is your mind. Like the, the, there's a part of your mind called your bank that stores negative emotions like sadness, grief, anger, jealousy. So yeah, they have some really funny terms that they use. I do encourage not to have any emotions because my experience, I'm local here, and I've had dealings with people, and they always meet not zombies, but they were kind of on that level. There was no humor. There was no. It was pretty flat line. Is that pretty much? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can be happy and joyous if you're getting wins from the courses you're taking. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, not the real world, it seems like there's no laughing, no, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, this is a whole different ball game here. I mean, this, I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> it is the, probably one of the most disturbing experiences seeing this whole flag compound and watching busloads of younger people, yeah. and looked like a lot of them were from Latin America, so I don't know if that's Scientology's latest game is they're going to different, like, third world countries and recruiting kids. So I saw a lot of that, and that's what it looked like to me, and just very uniform, you know, obviously their they're, uh, outfits, but I'd say a uniform code of thinking, you can tell, it, and that's why now I understand why people are comparing it to North Korea, because yeah. it yeah. is very... North Korean, like, very, uh, it's very sad. And I actually have two uh, people that are friends in my family that joined Sea Org about 10 years ago as a mother and son, and we haven't heard from them since. It's been 10 years, I, I don't know where they are. They're floating around here somewhere, and I don't know. Is your sister still in the church? Uh, it's sort of a mystery as to what happened. I mean, she was one of those people that would just eat, drink, and sleep Scientology. I mean, she's the epitome of somebody who's really brainwashed in it. And she's not the EP anymore. She has no part of the, the Phoenix Org. My understanding is because my mother was declared. Also, I, I think people she started associating with would be considered DBs, degraded beings, downstaff people. Uh, DV stands for like a degraded being, where you're, I don't know, be like a drug addict or a criminal. So they have these really insulting names that they have for everything. But she won't talk about it. That is what's so weird. I'm not really close to her. I, I never have been. She's my half sister. Uh, but she just acts like it never existed. She will not talk about Scientology. I, I think maybe because they told her to not disclose why she's no longer a part of it. So to this day, I have no idea why she's not a part of it. I don't think it was voluntarily on her own. I just think that she can't be a, a part of it anymore, just like my mother. Even though they still send my parents 20 things in the mail every week asking them to join staff. <laughs> and my mom has to remind them all the time if they call. And my mom says, you realize you're talking to an SP. I've been declared a suppressive person. Why are you calling me? And they still keep calling. And I, I don't know. Doesn't the 
pyramid represent ARC? I think There's so. Like the it's ARC. Triangle. 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 Triangle.